here hope everyone's having a fantastic day now this is just a little video about how you can care for echeverias now echeverias they're amazing plants and they're actually related to the crassula family and they're very similar to the other sort of hen and chicks plants as they're called um, such as the sempervivian the house leek which is this one here that one there and also the grapta patalums um, which here very similar called, called the ghost plant and they're all pretty much related but in this video i'm going to be talking to you about echeverias and how you can care for them now, this is only my experience of caring for them. Bearing in mind, I live in Ireland, which is a cold and damp climate compared to places like California, Arizona. So with my care instructions I'm gonna give you, this is mainly from my experience of growing indoors. I know that, that echeverias can easily be grown outdoors in warmer, drier climates, such as California and that. And some people have them in the rockeries and have some amazing displays. And there's, there's loads of videos on YouTube of some gorgeous echeverias all growing outdoors. So you're lucky guys in that type of climate. But this is only my experience of growing indoors and how I care for them. And if you're the same as me growing these indoors, I hope you can learn a bit from this video. Now, they come originally from uh, Mexico, Texas and Central America and they've got gorgeous rosette shaped leaves. The leaves on them are absolutely beautiful as this one here. Got a few different types. They, they almost look like they're always in flower which is what I love about Echeverias. They're just gorgeous. And the thing is they have a coating on them, most of them, not necessarily this one here. These, a lot of the ones, especially the ones with the lovely lilac colour to them, have like a, a coating on that if you touch them or splash water, it does come off. So when you're handling Echeveria, especially when it's repotting, make sure that you're very careful to, to not touch the foliage as much as possible. As you can see there, I've got my fingerprint on that and I splashed a bit of water on it and it's left little stains. So just bear that in mind, always with most Echeveria, that have this coating try not to handle them too much and the light requirements now echeveria is like all succulents most succulents unless it's some of the aloes and the hawarthias they love as much light as you can possibly give them so here they're in my conservatory which is south facing so they get plenty of sunshine when we get it that is <laughs> but um, they do get plenty of sunshine as you can see this one's sending out a flower for me which is really wonderful look at that so it gets plenty of sun so a south facing position on a windowsill is ideal but if you haven't got a south facing window then please try and put it in the sunniest window you can find and if you're in a warm climate and you're able to grow, grow these plants outdoors then obviously the sunniest part of your garden and um, they flower during the summer as I say here it's July here in Ireland and there's a beautiful flower just starting to form on there you can see the buds so uh, look out for a future video on that guys and what I do for feeding them I give them a little bit of tomato fertilizer I like to use maxi crop and I use it at half the recommended strength obviously that they recommend for tomatoes because you don't want tomatoes growing on them and um, it works a treat I use it with all my succulents and I've already done a video on how to get your cacti succulents to flower and I talk about that in there so um, I put a link up above check out the link up there after this video and watch that for some more tips on how to get your cacti succulents to flower and also why I like to use a uh, tomato feed on them so and I say I use that with every fourth watering so that's a good tip for you for your echeverias but I do know some people who say to me Lynn I never ever feed my, my echeverias and their flowers so remember this is only my experience I find it helps for me and with all my succulents and they like temperatures they like to be around 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit they don't like it too warm now obviously I say the sunniest spot you can find because here in Ireland we never really get it too warm anyway <laughs> so they need as much sun and heat as they possibly can because we will never get over 100 degree temperatures here but if you are in a very very hot climate just bear in mind that if it gets very very hot the leaves can scorch and burn even under glass I've even had some of mine where they've been in the winter window here and the leaves have gone a little bit yellow where they've had too much sun because although it might only be 70 degree outside it can easily be 100 under glass so bear that in mind so again ideal temperature 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit in an ideal situation and 18 to 24 degrees Celsius that's what it is in Celsius and when it comes to overwintering them now I keep mine in the conservatory it never drops below 4C in here 
Um, ideally, they recommend echeverias are kept about no lower than 7C because they can mark um, the, the lovely, beautiful rosettes if they get too cold and, God forbid, they can even rot. But the trick is to keep them dry. I keep mine totally dry from October until mid-March. Um, and I find they don't shrivel up because they're kept cool, but not to, no, obviously frost-free, they don't uh, shrivel up. But if you're keeping yours in a centrally heated room and they do start to shrivel, or they start to shrivel at all in the winter, unlike cacti where I say just leave them, they'll soon fatten up again, you can give them a little bit of water if you prefer in the winter, um, just to, to stop them from shriveling up too much. Um, but I just leave mine and I find keeping them cool is fine. But say, try to keep them no lower than 7 Celsius, which is about, probably about 45 degrees Fahrenheit to be on the safe side. Again, if you're in a lovely warm climate, you don't have to worry about that in the winter. And um, I think I've covered everything, the soil. Now, when it comes with the soil, I always prefer to make up my own. Again, if you're putting them in the garden, and you're in a warm climate, a sandy, sandy soil, well-drained, is really important because this, these, these plants are very prone to rotting, as all succulents and cacti are. So make sure that you pot them in the garden in a well-drained position. And if you're obviously growing them in a pot like me, again, a well-drained potting mix. I make my own. I prefer to use um, Johnning's number two or three, which is a soil-based compost that has little peat added, mostly um, soil. Um, so, you know, if you can't get hold of Johnning's, I know a lot of you in the States don't, have never heard of it even, then try and get a soil-based one rather than peat-based. Because if that's only my experience, I prefer to use soil than peat because I think it dries like cardboard it's really hard to re-wet again and I add, I add um, extra sand to my um, soil mix and I also use um, sometimes a bit of perlite as well and a bit of grit for extra aeration and drainage but um, check out I've got another video I've made on how to make cactus soil and although it says cactus soil you can use it for any succulents as well I'll put the link up above so check that out guys and it will save you a fortune on buying special compost mixes and things like that um, and the watering, I always prefer to use rainwater. I, it's personally where we live in Ireland, um, the water is very hard and it goes like white if you, if you water them, the soil just goes white and hard water isn't good for plants. So I prefer to use rainwater, but if you've got soft water where you live, um, or you can't get a hold of rainwater, then obviously you have to do what you do. But I prefer to use rainwater if it's clean and it's available. And I think I've covered everything there. Oh, we have the propagation. Now, obviously, if they have the little chicks, this is obviously a, um, a house leak here, not an echeveria. But they do form in a similar way. So, obviously, the little baby is easy, easy to take off and then just pot up and they root really easy. Um, and you can also do it from the leaf. Literally, just pull a leaf off, any of these, any of these. Let it dry for a few days. Don't put it straight into the soil because it can rot and um, they root so easily and I've done a separate video on how to propagate succulents the easy way and check that video up above I'll put the links to that it's so easy to do so um, that's another good one and they do also you can also sow seed and grow it that way but it takes a long time so obviously they're so easy to propagate from the leaves I highly recommend that and I think that's it I think I've covered everything guys um, I say this is only my experience of growing these plants indoors. <laughs> I'm not lucky enough to live outdoors, but the care is pretty much the same. Remember, they like lots of light, a well-drained potting soil, whether it's indoors or outdoors. When it comes to watering, um, obviously, because I say about a lot of them have the, the coating on them that easily um, comes off if you touch them, as you can see there. I always prefer to water them either right as close to the very, very base as I can or, the, or put them into a separate pot underneath. The reason being, obviously, if you water them from the top, that uh, water can stay in the top of the rosettes and sometimes rot. Now, this is different if you've got them outdoors. You can't really stop water landing on top of them, the rain. But um, remember outdoors, you've got the wind as well, and they dry off pretty quick. When you're growing them indoors, water can just stagnate and cause rot. So that's just what, what I personally prefer, to water underneath or at the base, um, rather than obviously watering them from the top where it's prone to rot. And I think I've pretty much covered everything, guys. So plenty of light, well-drained soil mix. Um, Tomato feed every fourth watering from spring to summer, um, from probably about the 
late March to probably end of mid middle August. Um, out whenever your summer is, depending on where you live in the world. And um, that's it. <laughs> really easy to look for, to, to care for. And they're amazing plants. So I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of happy growing, as always, from Ireland. Until the next video, bye!